Hello everyone and welcome back to Italy. I am Danilo Romolini and today we are back in Florence, Tuscany. Specifically, we are in one of the most desirable locations of this city. We are in fact on the Fiesole Hills overlooking the beautiful Florence from above. Not only we are in an incredible location, but also we are about to visit together what we could consider one of the most majestic and impressive properties of all of Florence, overlooking the city and all of the valley from above. Welcome to Castello di Vincigliata. Are you ready to see it? Come with me. The first evidence of the castle is dating back to the year 1031, when all of the Vincigliata area was dotted with properties belonging to the Visdomini family. In the following centuries, the property was then owned by several noble families in Florence. This was until when a wealthy English nobleman, John Temple Leader, fell in love with this place and decided to buy it to bring it back to its original glory. Over 10 years, between 1855 and 1865, and under the direction of architect Giuseppe Fancelli, the property was rebuilt and updated in the neo-Gothic style. But the castle was not enough for temple leader. He also bought the surrounding land and planted numerous trees along the hills, creating an impressive park. From all over the world, people flocked to Vincigliata, and among these was Queen Victoria in 1893. After the war, the castle has ever since been used for events and ceremonies, thanks to its charming atmosphere and incredible large terraces overlooking Florence. The estate covers a total surface of approximately 14 hectares, so 34.6 acres. Excluding the gardens and parks of the castle, the remaining land includes a vineyard of 3 hectares and a huge olive grove of 4.2 hectares. The rest is almost entirely covered in woodland. The private garden of the castle is 3,000 square meters, so 33,000 square feet. And it features a very typical Florentine layout with centuries old impressive cypress trees and bay trees. Whilst the perimeter is marked with evergreen hedges disposed in a geometric pattern following the criteria of Italian gardens. Let's now talk about the buildings of the property. The first one is right by one of the entrances. It is right behind me. It is a large country house, 443 square meters, so about 5,000 square feet laid on two levels with four bedrooms and four bathrooms. Right next to the previous building, we find another beautiful country house. It is 374 square meters, so about 4,000 square feet, laid on two levels. The ground level retains its original destination as a wine cellar, whilst upstairs we find two apartments with a total of four bedrooms and two bathrooms. The old sculptor's building is 240 square meters, so about 2,600 square feet. It has a very simple rectangular building shape that was once used to produce sculptures and bronze statues. On one of the corners of the castle, we find this beautiful tower you see right behind me. It is 116 square meters, so about 1,200 square feet. It has three bedrooms and three bathrooms.
And finally, let's have a look at the actual heart of the property, the castle. It is 2,300 square meters, so about 25,000 square feet. And it is very well preserved, surrounded by some gorgeous terraces and gardens. And it is full of centuries old, beautiful details, further enriching its already charming personality. The front terrace of the castle is without a doubt one of its most impressive outdoor spaces, made up of gardens, terracotta and stone floorings. Even though it is a broad and open space, the walls enclosing it give it a nice sense of privacy and comfort. The castle revolves around its central courtyard. It is on the ground floor and it is really architecturally stunning, full of gorgeous details like these stone sculptures, arches and beautiful gothic windows. Through this glass door we get inside this beautiful and large living area of the castle. It is sharing the same space with the courtyard, in fact it sees the courtyard on the left whilst on my right it overlooks the front terrace of the castle. It is a beautiful space, probably one of the most beautiful indoor spaces of the castle with these exposed walls on three sides double height ceilings with these ribbed gothic vaulted arches on the ceiling. Right behind me you see this gorgeous working stone fireplace. The floor keeps going and we find another three large reception rooms. Revolving around the central courtyard, they all have impressive high vaulted ceilings marble floors and also some stunning pieces of antique furniture. In the end we find the last room which is the hall of weapons and it is right opposite to the large living area we've seen. It is beautiful with high ceilings and full of ancient armors, spades and spears, all very well preserved and kept. We're now on the lowest level of the castle. Here we find some very beautiful rooms and spaces, most of which are embellished and frescoed all over the walls. Some of them are overlooking this beautiful courtyard, which is the second large courtyard of the castle. It can actually be seen from the terrace right above, and it is characterized by this loggia going all the way around with these gothic ribbed arch ceilings right above. The first floor of the castle hosts some reception areas and bedrooms. They need some renovation works, but already have a convenient layout. The floors are connected through internal staircases, but also through an elevator, which is quite rare to find in a castle. The first floor has then access onto this walking all around the central courtyard, which ultimately leads to a large terrace overlooking Florence. Let's have a look. The terrace is all stone paved, and without a doubt, what stands out most is this window that, with a single glance, lets you capture all of Florence. On the last floor of the castle, there are several rooms that could potentially be turned into bedrooms or living spaces. 
outdoors it has another walking all around the central courtyard with an incredible view on the surroundings. We've now reached the end of today's property tour. I hope you enjoyed this castle just as much as I did. One last thing I would like to mention is that I think it would be very suitable both as an accommodation business because it has enough spaces to host several guests, not only in the castle, but also in all of the other beautiful buildings the property includes. But also the castle especially has some pretty contained rooms to be a castle which makes it also very suitable to be a beautiful private residence steps away to Florence. I hope you enjoyed it. Before I leave you, please subscribe to our channel for the most impressive homes of Italy every week. Until next time, ciao!